What are my top 10 recommendations for you if you've been invited to meet with your target graduate program's director of admission? Stick around, let's talk about it today in this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy, Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to answer a valued viewer's question. Now, before we get started, you guys know I love you, so do me a huge favor and smash that like button. Helps us out a ton, and at the same time, doesn't cost you a dime. Or you can dislike the video, still helps us out, it's all good. But what I would also request is that you share this video with your friends, your colleagues, and your students, especially anybody you know who has been blessed enough to have been invited to go and sit down with the director of graduate admissions at their target graduate program. This could be a master's program, this could be a doctoral program, you name it. And I'm making this video to respond uh, to a colleague who has asked me a question on a video that I made previously and had posted called Top 5 Graduate School Interview Mistakes. And it seems like that video, which is awesome, has really taken off, which I absolutely love. And and uh, so hopefully we're gonna get a whole lot more views on that one. The funny thing about the channel, guys, is that right now it's only about like a little over 12% of everybody who watches the videos is subscribed. So obviously I would love to have more and more people subscribe to the channel. We've got a really stable pace right now in terms of how fast we're growing. It's amazing. I appreciate your guys' views and recommendations so much in terms of your recommendations for future videos and your questions, which I use to make videos. So if you have a question for me, be sure to put it down in the comments below. And if it's sufficiently high sensitivity, meaning that it's going to be as relevant to you as it will to all of our thousands of subscribers, I will make you a video response. In any case, here was the question that was posed. Please, what would be your advice for a PhD applicant invited for an informal meeting with the Director of Graduate Admission? Now, few key things here. Number one, obviously, in this case, we're talking about a PhD applicant, not an MD applicant, not a JD applicant, so on and so forth. PhD applicant, okay? The second thing is that we're talking about an informal meeting. Now, my recommendation is that it's always better to be over-prepared compared to under-prepared, and Hanson is also better. If you hear that somebody says it's an informal meeting, you should not show up in Bahama shorts and like a cut-off tee. No, make sure that you dress properly. You dress appropriately for the occasion. We're gonna get to that for a second, uh, in a second. So what I've done, guys, I've really racked my brain about it and I've thought about it, try to come up with kind of 10 different keys for you guys to keep in mind if you are in this situation, all right? So, number one, already have the answers to the basic questions about the program. You should not sit down and when you're asked, oh, you know, what questions do you have? Do you have for me? If the director of admissions is asking you that, you should not say things that are readily available online, even if you had to do some hunting first, especially something like numbers. Can you tell me the median grade point average of people who successfully are are getting into the program you can probably find either that or the average online or you don't want to say something about you know the test score let's say that it's the GRE graduate record examination you know well what is the median GRE score in the interquartile range for it you can probably find that information online and if not you can probably just call just call graduate admissions. You may talk to them, you may talk to somebody working underneath the director who can give you that information. This person's time is very valuable. You wanna make sure that you've made it very clear with the questions that you're asking them and the information that you're providing that you perceive yourself to be a fantastic goodness of fit with the program and that you have done your background homework so that you can use language on their website and parrot it back to them. For example, so I'm in behavioral health for example, I've got doctorates in psychiatry and clinical psychology. So that term that I just used, behavioral health, some programs may refer to it as mental health care. Other ones could refer to it as behavioral health care. If I did my background research, I read all about the program, I have a few key terms in my head. For example, a program says, we train the next generation of scholar practitioners. 
fantastic. Maybe you want to use that jargon. You want to use that term when you're having a casual conversation, casual sit down with this director of graduate admissions. There is nothing sweeter to these individuals than the sound of something that they have written or something about their own program. I want you to always keep that in mind, okay? Ah, something else. If, is your target supervisor actually accepting students? All right, you should already know the answer to that because if there's only one person you want to work at, at that program, only one individual who actually has a goodness of fit in terms of your research interests and theirs, you shouldn't go and sit down with them and say, oh, I was wondering, you know, is Professor Stevenson, is she accepting students this year? That information should be readily available to you on the website of that individual or the program, or it's something where you can ask Dr. Stevenson herself before you actually sit down with this individual. Otherwise, you're gonna seem completely ill-prepared and that is not my goal for you. So that is number one. Number two is to check the traffic report. What is traffic usually like? on a Monday afternoon, if that's when you're going to need to be at this location, okay? Super important. Make sure that you also check what traffic is gonna be like that morning. I want you to get there early. If you get there two hours early and you decide to go to the local McDonald's and chill out, go to the local Starbucks, hop on the Wi-Fi and answer some emails, I don't care, that's fine. I would rather that be the case than you be gunning it and trying to get there as quickly as possible because otherwise you're going to be late. You're going to be worried. It's going to show. You're going to be addled when you show up. That's not good. Okay, so just take the day, cancel any competing meetings that you're available to cancel or able rather to cancel and then continue onward. Okay? Number three, I know this sounds so stupid, please know where to park. There is going to be a sufficient amount of information even if it's something that you just go to Google Maps right, and you literally just place that little orange or yellow figure on the map and you take a look at where am I able to park? What is the visitor, the non-faculty parking? Where can I get? The worst thing to do is to drive there, you're five to 10 minutes early, and then you realize that you gotta go to a parking garage, you gotta pay to be able to park there, so on and so forth, or you gotta pick up a parking pass first from inside and then drive there. I mean, there's so many different situations you could find yourself in. All this background work needs to be done first. If you've watched any of the videos on this channel about preparing for to be able to max out your score on a standardized test like the GRE, this is one of the things that you'll have heard me say before, is I want you to imagine that you are like a professional runner, like Usain Bolt, for example, who specifically talks about visualizing races before he runs them. I want you to have meditated on this thing, run it through your head, know exactly what you're going to do on the day so that then you can just go and execute. That's what I want for you, okay? And one of the simplest things, please know where to park and know how approximately how long it's going to take for you to walk from there to wherever you were having that meeting. Could be a coffee shop, could be the department, could be the library, could be anywhere, okay? Time that out for yourself. Next one, number four, be 10 minutes early. When I say 10 minutes early, not to park, 10 minutes early with your butt in the chair, in the waiting room, waiting to be called in to be able to see the individual who you're supposed to be seeing. If you're meeting at a coffee shop or the library, etc., fine, show up 10 minutes early. Be there. Don't be there exactly on time. Be there early. Do not, under any circumstances, show up late and think that that's cool or that that's fashionable or it's going to make you look good like you're busy. That is foolishness. I can tell you right Right now, it is my pet peeve. Anybody being late is my pet peeve. I can't stand it. I cannot stand it. Uh, that, my other pet peeve, is people who are not at a postdoctoral level calling me by my first name or my middle name. Always call the person by their honorary name, whatever it happens to be, right? Be it, you know, Professor Singh, Dr. Singh, whatever it is. That person should give you permission, usually, to be able to call them by their first or middle name or whatever they like to go by, for example, right? But if you come and you're very casual, no, right? It is a sign of disrespect, okay? So that may be a little bit stuffy of me, but it's always better to start conservative and then open up because you can't start super liberal and then go backwards. That's not gonna work, okay? So that's the next thing. Next one is obvious. Please dress appropriately. Just dress appropriately. You guys know, I don't need to go into that. 
but it does deserve to be mentioned, okay? Dress appropriately. When I was a postdoc, I used to wear sandals almost every day. I was down in Tampa, it was burning hot outside, and I made it very, very clear to my chair that I was gonna wear sandals. And there's all sorts of reasons for that that I can go into sometime, but I said, yeah, that's just what I'm gonna do. I hope that it's okay, I got permission for it, fine. If you go into a place and you are wearing like Birkenstocks, you're gonna look like an idiot, and that is not something that I desire for you because I want you to be successful as you know. Okay, so dress appropriately, number five. Number six, when you're sitting in a chair, if that's what you're doing, if you're sitting in a chair, okay, let's say that this is the chair. Here is the back of the chair, and here is where your little butt would go, okay? I don't want your back to be fully touching the back of the chair. You're going to look too kind of stingy, kind of standing there like a soldier or something. It's a little weird that you're at that much attention. And I don't want you to sit all the way on the edge because otherwise you're going to be kind of leaning forward and your shoulders are going to be drooped down almost like you've got what they call tech neck, right? We don't want that to happen for you. Instead, right, I want your back, I want your butt to be about halfway in between the back of the chair and the front. Ironically, what that does artificially is it kind of forces you to kind of sit yourself up a little bit. You're more attentive. And obviously, if you're being interviewed or having a conversation, the other person wants to believe that you are engaged with them. And speaking of engagement, if you're not sure which eye of the person to look into, the answer is always the person's right eye. Why? It stabilizes your head and it shows the left side of your face. And what the literature suggests is that the left side of your face tends to be more attractive than the right side of your face, okay? So, look into the right eye, it's gonna show the left, etc. Now don't just turn your whole face, obviously, right? But make sure that you're just looking slightly, ever so slightly, over to one side, okay? Very good. Next one, number seven. Prepare a 30 second elevator speech. If you've watched any of my other videos when it comes to interviews, you will know that 30 seconds is basically what you've got. If they wanna ask more questions, allow them, God bless them, to be able to ask you questions, okay? 30 seconds though is what you've got. And this is the key thing to be able to give a little recap about who you are, your background, you know, these sorts of things. Especially begin the process of talking about how excited you are about the program, thank them for their time, tell them how valuable it is to you, and just say you've been really looking forward to this conversation. That's it, okay? Always tell them that it's your favorite program. Okay, if it's your number two, still tell them, you know, this is like no doubt, like my favorite program. Why? It's the right thing to say in the context to max out your odds of actually getting the opportunity, okay? Now, next one, make sure in any follow-up uh, questions, right, this is number eight, discuss how your research and the research you desire to do in graduate school, how is it that it aligns up with that of your target supervisor, okay? Remember, your target supervisor's job is not to basically teach you what you wanna learn and to help you do the research you wanna do. No, your job is to have a nice smooth landing and to make sure that as much as possible before applying, you have already developed a lot of methodological and statistical skills that are needed to be able to do the work already happening in the lab, okay? Especially if that individual is being funded by a grant, the likelihood is exceptionally high that you are going to have access to the data made available during that grant process, okay, collected during that grant, and that you are going to have some role to play in working on that grant, probably because if you're being partially funded, it's going to be by that grant, okay? So, super important thing to be able to think about. Really make it clear how it is that what you want to do fits into what they're already doing. If you have more questions about this, take a look on this channel. I have a great video about the five biggest doctoral dissertation mistakes, and that is one of them, okay? Is to be able to make this assumption that you can basically, you know, do what you want, and that what that suggests is that you have focused more on the program and not on the supervisor, and that is an epic fail that people don't talk about, okay? Next one, number nine. Have three specific and targeted questions 
for the program, okay? So targeted to the program for you to ask. Now, you can feel free to be able to post questions that you have below that you think would be good ones to ask, and we can chat a little bit about it. It'll also increase engagement on the video, which will get in front of more eyeballs. I always appreciate that. So I've come up with one for you already. Maybe you know their standard, their structured curriculum well enough, and the electives that they offer, that last year they offered a special seminar in something. Maybe a special seminar in hierarchical linear modeling. That was something when I was a postdoc, there was a special class on that, but it was only offered one time. So maybe you took a look at that and one of your questions could be, when I was taking a look at all the syllabi of different classes that were offered last fall, I noticed that one of the classes was a special seminar in HLM, in Hierarchical Linear Modeling. That's something that I'm really passionate about and something that I don't know a lot about right now. Is that the kind of thing that you think would be offered again? Something like that is great. It shows that you've done so much background research. It shows that you don't think that you know everything. And at the same time, it shows that you're passionate about learning a very advanced and difficult skill to learn. So that would be one example of the type of question that I would ask, okay? Finally, number 10 is to send a handwritten note. Don't send an email, even though you could, right? The best thing to do is to send, uh, literally go to any store that sells cards. Buy the card, go literally, buy a pen if you have to there, if you don't have one on you. Go to the post office and overnight that card to that individual, to that director of admissions, all right? They will not forget it. Somebody asked me once, they said, yeah, but aren't they just gonna throw it in the trash? Of course they're gonna throw it in the trash. They're not gonna put it on their refrigerator at home and remember for years, remember that one time that this guy sent me a thank you card? That's ridiculous, right? Of course they're not gonna do that. But it's something that no one else does. Your goal is to stand out. You wanna be memorable and that's something that can make you memorable uh, more than a lot of other things. Things. Other people are not going to do that. And please get a high quality card. Don't get something with like Snoopy on it or like a South Park card, right? Get something that is nice, that looks high quality. Yes, no matter how you know much money you have in the bank, you can spend money on a $3 card, you're gonna be okay, all right? Especially if it gets in, you into your target program, I'm all about it, okay? So, those are my top 10 tips for you guys. I hope that this was helpful for you. Remember to like this video, comment below to help the algorithm, and share this video with your friends, colleagues, and students. If you wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one and do consult sessions, I can help you with any number of things, from getting into your target grad, at school to get your dream postdoc. If you're nervous about your career or you want to undergo a career change, you're just not sure what to do, please book one or more sessions with me. I care about you, okay? That's why I do this. So please book a session with me down here at the website below, which is www.jphoenixsing.com. And if you're interested in peer reviewed publications and how to be able to publish in high impact journals or to be able to get grants, get edited book contracts and so forth, take a look at Publication Academy, www.publicationacademy.com. Love you guys, looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Thank you so much for stopping by everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.